nowadays, when people buy clothes, they're confronted with a whole range of colours to choose from. But up to the 1850s, all the dyes that were used for clothes were derived from natural products, insects or plants. It was quite common in Victorian times for widows to wear black, when also, uh, rather black, black clothes, such as Queen Victoria. In 1856, William Henry Perkin was trying to find a chemical that could be used for treating malaria. And he was trying to synthesize quinine, which at that time was known to treat malaria. Unfortunately, his reaction went wrong and he started with aniline, but he didn't get his expected product. And what he did find was in the product was a rather deep purple dye and he isolated this from his reaction vessel and it turned out, he called it Movine or Perkins Mauve and that was the first synthetic dye and that could be used for dyeing um, shawls and uh, clothes and it was a spectacular success. The significance of his invention is that it led to the growth of the organic chemistry industry in the UK because if you're making dyes on a large scale you need a large quantity of aniline and simultaneously it led to the growth of the synthetic drug industry. It was common at that time for dyes to be tested for their medical purposes and drugs to be tested f whether they're dyes. In fact the first synthetic uh, medicine was made at the end of the 19th century by Felix Hoffman who um, worked for I think Bayer, the company Bayer and he prepared the chemical which nowadays is still known as aspirin. So the pharmaceutical industry, which we associate with uh, making drugs in the laboratory, all started at the end of the 19th century, and that followed on from, from Perkins' work on the preparation of synthetic dyes.